When I started playing guitar, small guitar amps, especially practice amps, just weren't that good. They were often really cheaply made. You could get a sound out of them. Whether or not that was a good sound is very subjective. These days, that has completely completely changed. In 2020, Blackstar launched the debut line of amps, which was made up of a 10 watt and a 15 watt known as the debut 10 and the debut 15. These are fantastic analog practice amps. In this video today though, we're looking at the brand new bigger brother of these amps. This is the 1x12 50 watt debut 50. This is exactly how a small practice amp or your first gigging amp should be. So as I said at the start of the video, this is the newest model in the debut line from Blackstar. So in 2020 you had the debut 10 and 15. I shot one of the very first videos for the debut 15 which you can see linked in the top corner of this video. That is a really cool little practice amp. Now over the last few years the guys at Blackstar have basically been working on a way to take that idea, that little practice amp that sounds great, make it bigger and basically put this out there so that anyone who's looking for their first real kind of serious amp, so whether you're just starting your first band and you're looking for something to take along to rehearsals, or maybe you're already out gigging and you just want a small affordable amp that is just, you know, really simple and you can just plug and play, use your favorite pedals with it. This is really marketed at those two groups of people. So it is a bit louder than a conventional bedroom practice amp. It does output at 50 watts does have a five watt switch which we'll talk about in this video as well so you can use this quieter for home practice but really this is kind of the debut circuit but ramped up into a bigger amp 
ready to take out there and play loud. So before we dig into what this thing is and some of the specs, I just wanna let you guys know, I'm not getting paid for this video, but the guys at Blackstar did send me this amp to make this video with. As always, all the thoughts and opinions you're gonna hear in the video are my own. Before we dig into the specs, I just wanna say, I know a huge percentage of people who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. If that's you, please consider scrolling down and hitting the subscribe button. Subscriptions really help the channel to grow and helps me keep making content like this. So if you haven't already subscribed, please scroll down and hit that button right now. All right, so spec time. So the debut 15 is, you know, it's quite simple. It's all analog. It's based around a MOSFET preamp. So the benefits of this is that a MOSFET preamp will get you the same, I'm gonna use the word same loosely here, the same kind of clipping as a traditional valve amp. Now that was something that the guys at Blackstone were very keen with this little thing to do, is to kind of get it to sound like your favorite valve amp. So this is where it kind of appeals to gigging players. If you're used to carrying a heavy valve amp with you, but perhaps you don't wanna put your valves through the stress of being out gigging all the time, this was designed with that in mind as well. So it's actually pretty lightweight. It's a one by 12 combo, so obviously there's a little bit of weight there, but it's not as heavy as a traditional valve amp. But the idea with the MOSFET stuff was to basically try and get close to that valve clipping. So when you're playing this loud at volume, you're not really gonna notice too much of a difference in the grand scheme of things once you pair it with all your pedals and you mic it up to the PA and everything else. MOSFET, for anyone who cares, stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. So the preamp is based around these type of transistors. They do give you that kind of typically more warm clipping sound rather than the kind of harsh clipping that we've come to expect from solid state amps. So this amp is available in two colors. It's available in this cream and oxblood color, and it's also available in a finish they call Black and Biscuit, which you'll see popping up on the screen right now. So, specs. So this is a 50 watt one by 12 combo. Two channels, it's got a clean and an overdrive channel. It's got a three band EQ. It's got Blackstar's patented ISF feature. It's got a switch where we can power it from 50 to five watts. It's also got a switch where we can go from plate to hall reverb. It's quite tonally powerful considering how affordable this is. So at the time of shooting this video, I believe the price on these new is gonna be around about the 200 pound mark. I think they're actually gonna come in a bit under that. Obviously once this video is out, the prices will be public so you guys can check with your local retailer but it's gonna be affordable. It's going to be in that price point where, you know, picking one of these up is not gonna break the bank. So it's a good weight, like I said, you could easily transport this thing around, but with it being a one by 12 speaker, it's got a lot of efficiency. So if you're playing this with a band, with a drummer, it's perfect for that kind of situation. So let's take a look at the top panel now and see what we've got going on. So from the start, we've got the input here where you're gonna plug your guitar in. Then we've got the clean channel volume. So this is just for the clean channel. There's no gain on the clean channel, obviously, because it's just clean. So that's your volume for your clean channel. Then we've got the drive channel here, the next two knobs, we've got the gain and volume control for that channel. So you can have a separate volume for each channel. You can obviously match those yourself as you kind of need. In between the knobs for the clean and drive section, we have two buttons. The top button is for the clean channel. This is the clean bright switch. So what this is gonna do is it's just gonna add some extra kind of upper frequency content there to your sound to make it brighter. And the bottom button, is the one that toggles between the clean and the drive channels. So we've got the gain and the volume there for the drive channel, as I said. Then we come into the EQ section. So this EQ section is shared between both channels of the amp. So you can't have a separate EQ for the clean and drive. So we've got the bass, middle, and treble controls, and then we've got Blackstar's patented ISF. Now the ISF, if you're unfamiliar with this control, is kind of one of the things that Blackstar nailed from day one. This is a really cool feature that they've always included on their amps. When it's in the full position like this, like you've got it turned up to 10, the ISF kind of takes on a British voicing, and then when you turn it all the way down like this, so to zero, it becomes more of an American voicing. So the way the ISF works is it takes the kind of picture of what your EQ does on your amp, and it kind of moves that picture between where the kind of boundaries are between different guitar amps. So if we think of an American guitar sound, we typically think of amps that are slightly more scooped in the mid-range but have more pronounced lows and highs. And then as we come over to more British voiced amps, we have more of a pronounced mid-range, but perhaps less detail at the top and bottom of the spectrum. So the ISF kind of takes us from the extremes of, you know, very mid-rangey British to kind of scooped American, but then we can set it anywhere in between as well. So that's a really cool feature because really, with the ISF control and whatever you set your own EQ to, 
you can technically make your black star amps sound like whatever you kind of imagine your sound is. So you might have that kind of super scooped American sound, but you might want a little bit of mid-range in there. You just bring the ISF up slightly to give you the right amount of blend between the two sounds. So that's actually incredibly useful for people who are just kind of chasing their own tones as well, because you really can come up with unlimited combinations. And then last, we've got the reverb section. So we've just got one control for the reverb, which is the level. And then we've got a little button in between that and the ISF control. When it's in the down position, it's in plate mode. And in the up position, it's in hall mode. And then we've got one more button here, which sets the amp between five watts when the button is pressed in and 50 watts when the button is pressed out. Then on the back of the amp, we've also got some additional things. So this runs off a standard IEC. We've got an effects loop here, so you can run your favorite reverbs, delays, whatever else you want after the preamp section but before the power amp. Then after the effects loop, we've got this little mini jack here in the middle. This is an auxiliary in, so you can connect your laptop, you can connect your iPad, whatever you want, your favorite MP3 playing device, playback tracks through the speaker and jam along. Got a foot switch input here. This doesn't come with a foot switch, but any of Blackstar's twin-sided latching foot switches will work. One side will turn the amp from clean to drive, and the other side will turn the reverb on and off. Then we've got the output here, the line out, which also doubles as a headphone output. So if you want to practice at home silently, plug your headphones into that. It'll disconnect the speaker and then you can practice silently. And then the speaker is an unbranded 4 ohm 12 inch speaker. So the great thing there is any off the shelf speaker upgrade with you know whatever speaker brand you want, you could easily swap that out. As long as you stick to a 4 ohm speaker, you can easily you know pull this thing out, chuck your favorite 12 inch speaker in there, if you really wanted to. That idea is probably going to appeal more to gigging guitar players where you might have played a specific speaker for a long time and you're really used to how that sounds. You could easily swap that out in this amp as well. But that said, the default speaker is really good. I'm going to assume it's just one that Blackstar have designed with one of their manufacturers themselves, but it does sound really good. So that is about it. That is all the features of the Debut 50R. So now we're gonna plug this thing in and hear what it sounds like. All right, so gear-wise, I'm gonna be using my Valiant Guitars Jupiter for this video. This has humbucker, single coil, and kind of out of phasey settings. So it's a pretty good all-rounder for showing this amp off. The Debut 15 is mic'd up with the Lewitt Audio LCT 440 condenser mic. And that's it. The mic is going straight into my DAW. There's no additional pedals being used in this video. Everything you're gonna hear is coming from the amp. So we're gonna start with some clean tones. Now I'm going to start with some single coil cleans to really kind of show off how chimey this thing is. So I've got both the pickups set to single coil modes. I'm just going to play a little bit. I'm going to tweak the EQ. As you can see from the top panel of the amp, everything is just set to midnight currently, including the ISF. And I've got the reverb set to just above kind of nine o'clock. So I'm just going to tweak those a little bit as I play. The clean bright is disabled at the moment. We'll talk about that in a moment.
So you can see there's quite a lot of variation there from the clean tones, even just with some simple EQ tweaks. Now, I was just kind of going from quite warm to quite bright sounds there. It does sound really great. Now, this also works really well with parallel sounds. So this is kind of like a bit more out of phasey. I really like it in this American style sound with a little bit less mid, but the ISF not quite all the way to the American side. I like it maybe about here. So what the clean bright switch is going to do is it's going to give us a bit more chime on top of that. So I'm just going to play a couple of chords now and I'm going to enable that switch as I do. I'm going to set the EQ back to midnight for this and the ISF back to midnight as well, just so you can hear how that clean bright switch works. So that adds quite a nice additional sparkle on top. The clean tone can get pretty bright anyway with the EQ, but obviously we can make that even brighter as well. So if you want some really shimmery, really kind of bright sounding tones, it's great for that. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to the overdrive side. We're gonna start with some lower gain tones. So I've got the gain here set to a quarter of the way up. Uh, the EQ is back to midnight and the ISF is to midnight as well. I'm gonna tweak the EQ a little bit and the ISF, and I'm gonna push the gain maybe up to about halfway in this section as well. So we're just gonna focus on some of the lower gain sounds. I've also got the guitar back in humbucker mode for this as well. <laughs> Thank you. 
there are some of the lower gain tokens now. Obviously, we've only kind of explored the gain range up to about halfway. So I'm going to reset the amp once more. Now we're going to go up to halfway. Now, there is a little bit of noise from this, which you can probably hear through the microphone there. That's not present on the clean channel. So as we go into higher gain territories with this amp, there is a bit of noise present from the speaker and the amp. I mean, that's kind of to be expected with a small amp like this. It's It can do high gain, but it's not kind of designed around a high gain circuit, if that makes sense. So yeah, expect a little bit of noise, especially when you sat quite close to the amp like I am. These are kind of vintagey hot pickups as well. So that could also be playing a part in why I'm getting a little bit of noise. Same thing if you're playing with single calls, you're going to get the same noise. If you're using something, you know, super modern, like an active EMG, then maybe, you know, you wouldn't get the same noise level. But I'm getting a little bit of noise, but you can kind of forgive that for how good this thing sounds. So now we're going to explore some of the higher gain range. So I'm pretty much going to go all the way up here from halfway all the way. We're going to go from like kind of classic metal tones, that kind of classic 80s British metal thing, right through to some slightly more scooped American metal tones. So here we go. <laughs>
So there is quite a lot of gain available. I mean, it's a small amp. It's not really designed to sound like a super crushing high gain. But we can kind of dial in some quite nice scooped American tones like this. <laughs> It doesn't have that super fat low end unless we really crank the bass and bring all the treble out mm. on the drive channel. Mm. But there's plenty of gain there to actually keep most people happy. Now, the noise could be an issue. What you could do is you could just run a noise gate in the effects loop. That will trim all of that out. I'm going to assume that what's happening here is I'm just really pushing the preamp of this probably a little bit too hard. I mean, it has the gain range, so it's obviously designed with that in mind, but you can tame some of that noise with uh, a noise gate or a sort of noise suppressor in the loop of the amp as well. That would trim it out nicely. For the price, though, that sounds fantastic. I mean, there's a ton of great gain tones there. For me, I mean, I'm more of a low gain player by trade anyway. So some of my favorite settings that I found on the amp are somewhere in this kind of region where I'm playing maybe like with some parallel coil sound in the middle position. I really like those kind of low gain crunchy sounds, but yeah, ton of great sounds in this thing. Now the power reduction is really cool. So I've been running this on 50 watt mode for the entirety of the video so far. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play a little bit, and I'm gonna flip it to five watt mode. Now you can see here my gain volume is actually really, really low. So I'm not pushing a ton of power on the volume. It is quite loud in the room, but the 50 watt mode and the five watt mode, this is where you can take this from being like a gig and rehearsal ready amp to a bedroom amp. So I'm going to play a bit, I'm going to turn on the 5 watt mode, and what you'll hear through this microphone is quite a drastic reduction in power. Now that sounds extreme because you're literally hearing 50 down to five. I'm literally scaling it down by 90% of its total value there down to five. But the five watt is really useful if you want to practice at home and you want to turn the amp up a little bit more, you can kind of find the perfect medium there between loud and not upsetting the neighbors. Now we're going to go to the clean channel again and we're just going to play with the range of the ISF. Now I've been doing a little bit as I've been tweaking, but I really want to show you what the ISF actually does to the tone as I play. I'm going to do this with drive as well. So I'm going to leave my guitar in single coil mode, so single coil neck and middle, but with both of them on at once, which sounds like that. Uh, the ISF was just under halfway there, so I'm going to do that again with it on half. Now I'm just going to strum some chords, and I'm going to turn the ISF all the way this way, so it goes to the American side, and then all the way up to the British side, just so you can kind of hear the range of what it does. So you can hear how that kind of scoops out a little bit and then all that mid comes in. On the British side, the ISF makes it slightly darker as well. So you can really kind of blend in between. And obviously I did a couple of in-between settings there. Same thing now with some low gain crunch. Uh, same thing, so both pickups on, both in single coil mode. <laughs>
again, best of both worlds there with the British and American thing. The last thing to talk about now is the reverb. So I've had it set on the whole mode for the entire video, around about a quarter of the way up. Now I'm just going to strum some chords and go through the extreme kind of range of the hall mode, and then we'll do the plate mode as well. So same pickup configuration, both pickups on, single call mode together. <laughs> So there's quite a lot of reverb there. I do find that that whole sound almost has like a gate to it. Where there's kind of an abrupt end, we get a lot of reverb, but maybe not as much tail. I would maybe like to see a bit more tail on that, but I mean, that's just personal preference. I like a lot of reverb when I play, but the actual sound is pretty good. Now, I know that obviously adding controls to improve and increase the tail of the reverb, that's obviously going to come at an extra cost. So considering what this amp fits into, that's a really good reverb. Now, same thing with the plate mode. quite nice there's almost like a shimmery almost like a shimmery kind of modulated tail to that that's really nice i mean those two reverb options are great i like having reverb anyway in an amp but the fact you get two different ones in this price is fantastic now we're just going to hear a quick bit of both reverbs with some drive uh, i'm just going to do bridge single call for this I'm going to start with them both at the halfway position, starting with plate, and when you see me press this button, sorry, starting with hall mode, and then when you see me press that button there, it's going to be plate. <laughs> There you go, there is the Blackstar Debut 50R. What a cool amp. I mean, practice amps have come so far in the 20 odd years I've been playing guitar. I wish amps were like this when I started playing. I say that all the time about affordable gear. I really think that, you know, if you are starting to play guitar right now in the year 2023, or you're someone who's been playing a while and you're just kind of buying your first serious pieces of gear, it's never been a better time to not spend a ton of money. Now, this thing, when I was younger, would have cost hundreds of pounds. The equivalent to this kind of tone and this kind of quality 
was not cheap. When I was starting out, all the practice amps were, you know, the ones that sat in this price range didn't really sound that good. I really wish this existed back then. So if you are just buying your first real kind of serious amp now, I mean, wow, what a killer amp. I love the way it looks. I'm really glad that the guys at Blackstar chose to send me this color. I think both look great, but I've always had a soft spot for this color scheme. You know, I've got the Studio 10 6L6 back there, which is one of my favorite amps of all time. And the color scheme is what drew me to that as well. And the Debut 15 I actually did a demo on three years ago now was also in this color scheme. So this is a nice addition to the collection. So big thanks to Black Stuff for sending this along as well. I love this thing. What a cool amp, it sounds great. You're probably gonna see it in a bunch more videos. So if you wanna find out more about this amp, there are some links down below. You can check this thing out. You can pick one up yourself and get all of these great tones. Let me know what you guys think of the sound of the Debut 15 down below in the comments. And let me know what your first practice amp was as well. I'd love to know what you guys started out practicing on compared to what we can get for the money these days. As I said, this is probably gonna retail around or maybe just under the 200 pound mark in the UK. Obviously check the links down below to find the exact pricing once this thing launches. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I really like this. I've actually been blown away by this. I don't really have anything bad to say about it, which is quite annoying because not that I look for bad things to say about a product, but you know, when I give my opinion on something, I always like to say, this is what to watch out for. But you know, since I plugged this thing in, I can't really find anything other than the noise maybe. You know, when you're playing with high gain, there's a little bit of noise. That would probably be my only negative thing to take away from this amp. But if you can live with that or you can stick a noise gate in the loop, then who cares? What a great sounding amp. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well. Subscriptions really help the channel to keep growing. And I know a huge percentage of people who watch these videos are not already subscribed. So if that's you, please go and hit that button right now. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. And like I said, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I'll see you very soon.